Now I've been going for the Cretaceous for a while now and I've touched a lot in the Hell Creek Formation. Now if you're not from America or just don't feel that I'm giving enough other countries love, don't worry, there is a lot to get round to, but I'm getting round to it. But today I want to go over a really strange and enigmatic dromaeosaur from the same formation as T-Rex and Triceratops. So let's see if we can't figure out Dakota Raptor or the ghost of the forest. So Dakota Raptor is a dinosaur that has gotten a remarkable amount of attention in the past few years, namely for two reasons. One, it lived in the same formation as T-Rex, which is obviously the only dinosaur that people actually care about. And two, the fact that it is a bloody big raptor. Quick side note, I often use the term raptor and dromaeosaur interchangeably, but the term raptor actually refers to birds of prey in its original use, and refers to any predatory dinosaur in its modern use. Whereas dromaeosaurs are the group of dinosaurs that people are usually referring to when they think of the Jurassic Park type raptors. Now it's a contextual kind of term, but just to clear up any confusion, I do sometimes throw the word raptor in when I'm referring to dromaeosaurs, because, well, I just want to ease the newcomers of paleontology in. So back in 2005, Robert De Palma found a fluvial bone bed in South Dakota that had a rich conglomerate of dinosaur and non-dinosaur remains. Many of these specimens were attributed to a dromaeosaur, but the remains weren't really expanded upon for quite a few years. A whole decade later, a team came together with De Palma, including David Burnham, Larry Martin, Peter Larson, and the famous Bob Backer to finally describe these new remains, naming it in 2015 as Dakota Raptor Steini, in honor of the paleontologist Walter W. Stein. Now the remains are fragmentary, which has cast some doubts that I'll get into soon enough. But what is known are a few back and tail vertebrae, nearly full remains of both arms, and most of the legs. Now these remains have shown that for a dromaeosaur, this was a big animal. The overall estimated length of Dakota Raptor is 5.5 to 6 meters, or 18 to 19.7 feet, with a height of 1.8 to 2 meters, or 6 to 6 and a half feet, and a weight of anywhere between 220 and 350 kilograms, or 485 to 772 pounds. Dakota Raptor, despite the size, was fairly light built, especially when we compare it to dromaeosaurs of similar size, such as Utah Raptor. The limbs were slender and lightly built, with the tibia being longer than the fibia, showing it was built for pursuit speed, and held the iconic sickle claw on the second digit of each foot. Though the flexor tubercle, which is the bump at the bottom of the claw, which attached to flexor muscles for it, was notably smaller than in other dromaeosaurs, meaning it likely didn't actually use it as extensively as the others. There is also what appears to be sexual dimorphism seen, with more robust and grey cell specimens that histological studies show belong to fully grown adults, though it remains unclear which is male and which is female. Now like all dromaeosaurs, Dakota Raptor was covered head to tail to legs in feathers. These feathers would have been short and filamentous on the head, likely covering it in such a way that it gave it a beaked appearance when the mouth was closed, and the rest of the body was covered in longer down-like feathers and prettier panaceous feathers along the tail and forelimbs, giving it a tail fan and what heavily resembled bird wings. So think less Jurassic Park raptors and more giant groundhog. Now the coat raptor, as already stated, was from the Hell Creek Formation, which is from the same likes as T-Rex, Triceratops and Quetzalcoatlus, all three of which I'll leave links for to my videos in the description. The Hill Creek Formation itself is also something I've already gone into in extensive detail here, so be sure to also watch that if you want the full details of that formation. But Dakota Raptor is currently the only known medium-sized predator that roam this area, calling into question a hypothesis that this area's medium-sized predator niche was being filled by juvenile and sub-adult T-Rexes. Occupying these coastal plains and angiosperm forests alongside Dakota Raptor was the aforementioned dinosaurs and pterosaurs, along with Pachycephalosaurus, Ornithomimus, Edmontosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. So that's where it lived, but what about how it lived? Well, again, we're most certainly looking at a pursuit predator here. Though the reduced strength of the toe claw does call into question some very classic images of a dromaeosaur like this. These claws appear to be either for pinning down prey or to aid in climbing, which Dakota Raptor could still likely do, but was putting less emphasis on it. So that raises the question, 
what was it doing differently? But before that, we need to ask another question. Did it exist? It sounds silly, I know, but this dinosaur has been given the ghost of the forest for good reason. Hell Creek is one of the most extensively researched formations on this planet for dinosaur fauna, and incredibly, Dakota Raptor has only yielded a couple of specimens in the last 150 years. There have also been certain similarities noted between Dakota Raptor and another smaller dromaeosaur from the same formation, Akira Raptor. Now, despite popular belief, finding a vertebrate fossil of this size is not how it looks in Jurassic Park. You pretty much never find pretty museum quality, full articulated skeletons laid out all nicely in the position it died in. And even when you do, you can barely tell what's going on at a glance. And this is all thanks to the taponomical process, which I talk more about here, but normally we find and name species from a few fragmentary remains. The trouble that is sometimes bumped into is when you have multiple bones in an area and have to establish whether or not certain bones all belong to the same individual. Now this is easy if you've got two identical looking right femurs because that means you've got either two individuals or one individual with two right legs. But if a site has a mishmash of bones that seem similar but differ mostly in size, then there can be confusion. Now it's been argued by a few that this was the case with Dakota Raptor and that this dromaeosaur in particular is actually Chimera, being a mixture of turtle remains and remains of what some argue are larger specimens of Akira Raptor. Now Akira Raptor is much smaller than Dakota Raptor, but we really only have some jaw and teeth remains, so maybe this species got larger than we thought. In that case, the rule of taxonomy means that if two specimens are named different species but are then found to be the same, the name that was given first gets priority, with a famous case being that of Brontosaurus. So if this is the case, then Akira Raptor got bigger than we thought and Dakota Raptor is a fictional dinosaur. But which side of the argument do you support? Are we wrong about Dakota Raptor's existence? Or was the niche of a medium-sized predator thought to have been filled by juvenile T-Rexes actually being challenged? You know what to do. Leave a comment down below and let's start a discussion that I know yous are really good at and I will catch you guys next time.